Welcome to the Making of Young Chefs. I'm Ale. And I'm with Marianne. Hi. And Jean. Hello. And we're University of Pennsylvania students working with an after-school program at Sire High School to produce a cooking show. This is part of a larger after-school initiative. And although the club is facilitated by Eric, it's the young chefs that do all the work. We brought the equipment in mid-March for them to start shooting their first episodes. And after some editing magic, it was ready for TV. Today, guys, today we're gonna to be making a bracket soup, and the guys who are gonna be helping me make it today are, are I'm Chef Kong, I'm Chef Xavier, I'm Chef Devin. In a medium soft pan over medium high heat. So I take onion and carrot and margarine or butter until onions begin to brown. The milk inside of it and make sure we get a good texture. Make sure you gotta stir it too because milk seems to cook really weird. Like our cameraman just said over here. <laughs> our camera woman. Add two, one fourth cup to here. 19. And Across the country, more states are enacting tough new restrictions, bracing for worse days ahead. Fears over COVID ID are impacting daily life. Just, More schools across the area are closing. So right as now, I'm adding two to one fourth cups into here. And now I'm going to add one whole cup of milk. More than 4,000 falling to COVID-19. The loss of life only expected to climb. The White House Coronavirus Task Force revealing grim models. The fields are empty, the playgrounds deserted, and all across the United States, school buildings sit empty. Nobody's kind of lived through something like this before, at least here. There's just like giant question marks, you know, everywhere, not just in the education system, but just like, um, there's just a lot of confusion, as you can imagine. Going up to it, you know, you saw students starting to wear gloves and staff as well, and masks, and some students were like carrying around things of pre-rel to like wash their hands and their friends' hands and stuff like that. And then the staff at a certain point, they were all like, what's going on? We gotta close, you know? I mean, at that point, a bunch of other school districts around the country had already closed. Um, and the Philly school district waited until that Friday, that very last day to even make the announcement. So people were kind of left guessing, I think, for, for most of that time. Hi. Hi. Hey, hey guys. I'm so happy to see you guys. This all happened so fast. Pen closing, school closing, Philly canceled schools. I mean, the whole thing has shut down because they're trying to flatten the curve. Everything's just like done and just stopped. Everything seems so different now. Classes are virtual and we cannot continue shooting the Sire Young Chef show. I was so excited to see what they would do next. Me too. And I went back to film their second episode and it was so much fun letting them have at it with the cameras, with the mics. They filmed 90% of their own show. I was hardly even involved. And then everything shut down just so abruptly. Yeah, and like the, the reality is this is not the first time that like a youth program gets interrupted or gets put on pause. But what is new is that the whole school community is put on pause. Like everything's set and no one can go in. So. I think for the next step, we should reach out to Eric. He's the cooking club coordinator and see what he knows and what his plans are. Also, just how the kids are doing. I think he would know. Uh, yeah, I do worry and think about what the students are up to, you know? I mean, I think it's very likely that this is time that will not be made up. Trying to keep, you know, what is there, 200,000 teenagers, you know, or students in that school district, keeping them all cooped up at home is like, it's not a great idea, you know? Um, so I do worry about that. It would be better to be 
able to be in contact with them, you know. This club is part of a larger after-school program, and the club's current project is to produce a cooking show that highlights healthy recipes and includes student-created music. This project combines gardening, nutrition, and art, fostering a community of creators. Now schools are closed, and there is a shelter-in-place order, so many aspects of life are shifting online, interrupting this project and the after-school community. Okay, I'm done. Let me get out of here. Let me move. Yeah. I have the corona. Oh, that's the corona. I have the corona. <laughs> well, I, wait, I might, I might have the corona. Cooking is at the heart of, and food, making food, you know, is at the heart of, like, every good thing, human experience, you know. My whole thing is there's an opportunity to do good work, right? So there's opportunities to make personal connections, to, to have an experience that they might not otherwise, right? I mean, I hope they come away with some skills that they didn't necessarily have before. Um, you know, I think it's it's nice that we're able to do work that's practical and um, work that is with your hands. I get a kick out of seeing students like take carrots out of the ground for the first time, and like you kind of see the the sparks start to start to fly. So that's cool. Wait, so I gotta cut this? Yes. But what's that? So right now we are prepping the food. This is not. Meals bring people together, and after years of cooking and sharing meals with students, Eric has found that in the space, partnerships and trust are fostered among all participants, including himself. So yeah, I've, I definitely learned a lot about, I don't know, myself and human nature and all that through, um, through teaching. There's not a such thing as being a perfect teacher, but I think just our presence, hopefully our presence, you know, being an adult that actually can listen um, and show up you know, in a reliable way for students, I think uh, is a good thing. These clubs meet at school, but outside of the academic day. This program is just one of many after-school initiatives that promote students' creativity and are built around a shared interest. If you don't know us again, welcome to the podcast of Series and Says. I think that's the time when uh, things that don't happen or can't necessarily happen during the school day can happen, right? So that's when students can learn photography or music production or gardening and cooking, right? I mean, we're talking about public education in Philly. So, you know, if you went to a private school somewhere, maybe they'd already have that stuff, or I'm, I'm, I'm sure that they do have some of those subjects during the day, right? Um, but I, yeah, I think, gener you know, basically it's important to see that programming as valuable and enriching to students, maybe even more so than some of the classes. Really much, I like photography because it's like, it's fun to me. It's like, it's, it's something, something easy to do. We spoke with Eric in late March when schools were closed with the hope that they would reopen in May. It is now late April and schools will remain closed. There are plans being developed for programs to continue online over the summer. If the goal of a cooking program is to have students come in every week and cook a recipe and then eat it, and it's often something that they d haven't made before or eaten before, then I think that's a general success, right? And if students are coming in for gardening, having not really had that experience before and learning something about that, then that's also a success. We are chef of the future. We are in this club because we make better choices of what we eat and the food is healthy. And we have a fun time cooking, so. Yeah, I think I think we do all right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. See you later. Portages. Doctors want to make sure medical professionals in hospitals across America have the masks. See you next time on Smooth Jazz.